Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be discussing our neighbor Venus and some of the more recent discoveries and some of the more unusual discoveries in regards to this somewhat unusual but very beautiful planet. Although I guess in this case the beauty is very subjective. And specifically we'll be discussing some of the discoveries in regards to the mysteries of its atmosphere, the mysteries of the length of the day on Venus, and some of the more recent pictures taken by the NASA's Solar Parker probe that actually help us identify features that have previously been invisible. Now let's actually start with that. So just a few weeks ago, the iconic probe that's responsible for studying our Sun and that's been doing a pretty good job at discovering new things about our Sun, has once again approached Venus relatively close in order to use it for what's known as the slingshot maneuver, in order to essentially reduce its orbit and come closer and closer to the Sun. During this time, it used one of its instruments known as Whisper, the instrument has been producing this incredible image of the solar corona that we've already seen in some of the previous videos, to once again take some of the pictures of Venus as it was passing by. And the thing about Whisper is that it generally receives the pictures in a relatively similar spectrum of light as our eyes. It's essentially taking optical images. But it's also able to see a little bit of the infrared, although some studies suggest that humans can as well, but that's beside the point. The point is that it was able to take some new shots of Venus that were previously unavailable. And specifically in this case, as it was passing by Venus, it was able to also take some shots from the night side, from the side that's supposedly a little bit cooler. Now this is the interesting part. We know that generally, Venusian atmosphere is ridiculously hot, like we're talking about hundreds of degrees hot. And because of this, if you were to see this in the infrared, it would all just be sort of glowing and would look just like a, I guess, some kind of a really bright overexposed bowl. But that's of course on the day side. If you were to look at the night side where things are a little bit cooler, some of the features start to kind of stand out. And in this case, when taking pictures of the area that's normally sort of dark, once again, because this is the night side of Venus, the probe saw this. Now, it might be kind of difficult to see what we're actually looking at here, but just watch that dark spot in the middle. That dark spot right here aligns directly with some of the features we know on Venus using radar studies. In other words, it became possible to see through the atmosphere of Venus for the first time. And seeing through the atmosphere of Venus has never been done before. And that's essentially a kind of a groundbreaking achievement. It means that if looking at this in the near infrared light, and specifically if looking at this on the dark side of Venus, some geological features start to be visible because they're essentially glowing. So these mountain ranges here are so ridiculously hot that they sort of look like these very hot glowing pieces of iron. Essentially sort of what you see right here. In this particular case, exposing the region on Venus known as Aphrodite Terra. The region that's, I guess, better visible in this radar image produced in the last few decades. And so because this particular region is higher in altitude and because it's slightly cooler, it becomes visible in the infrared imagery. But even though this might not reveal anything new about Venusian topography, for example, it does potentially help scientists identify what sort of minerals are present on the surface by calculating how much heat these minerals emit through measuring the infrared light. This obviously hasn't been done yet, but by doing this and comparing this to the rocks on Earth, the scientists could, in theory, determine what all of this is made out of, which could then be used to study the history of Venus, including its mysterious volcanism. And that's really the biggest mystery on Venus, because the scientists today believe that it's the volcanic activity, or possibly the lack of volcanic activity, that sort of caused Venus to turn from the twin of planet Earth to the inhospitable hot world that it is today. And there's actually at least one recent study that even potentially identified some unusual activity in this region right here, known as the Aiden Mons. The region that's essentially a volcano, or an ancient volcano, that's about two and a half kilometers in height and is approximately 200 kilometers across. In other words, a pretty big volcano. And during the Venus Express mission that operated between 2006 and 2014, a lot of the imagery taken by this particular mission revealed something that resembled the volcanic flows in this region. In essence, revealing the ongoing volcanic activity that might be present on Venus today or at least some sort of a, an explained signal that seems to be originating from this region. In this particular case, the signal being geologic. 
And along with some other studies that establish that if there is any lava present on Venus, it would very likely disintegrate pretty quickly within just about a thousand years, it would actually make sense that there would not be a lot of signs of recent geological activity unless it's actually happening right now. With the study of course suggesting that Venus is still geologically and volcanically active. Which is one of the more important questions the scientists are trying to answer. Because by answering this question, we can maybe try to figure out what sort of things we can expect on planet Earth in the next few millions or billions of years. But in order to answer this question, we also have to try to understand why is Venus so different to begin with, compared to planet Earth that is. And there might be a potential answer about this as well. In this particular case, the answer coming from various supercomputer simulations that try to analyze what happens to various planets like Venus when they experience all sorts of different impacts during the initial creation or formation of the solar system. And in this case, the focus was on comparing the high impacts on Venus to high impacts on Earth, essentially during the so-called late heavy bombardment when pretty much most of the planets experienced various types of impacts. And turns out that about 25% of all of the collisions on Venus would have been pretty fast and produce a lot of energy on the surface. Each of the impacts would have a velocity of about 30 kilometers per second. And when it comes to the energy released during an impact, it's really the velocity that matters most compared to, for example, mass. And that's actually because of the formula for how energy is calculated. It's mv squared. The velocity is squared, so it has much higher influence. And so if we take the same rock and we basically have it collide with Earth versus Venus, on Venus is going to produce a lot more heat and a lot more energy. And the explanation for this is really simple. Because Venus is closer to the Sun, a lot of things in the orbital position here will be moving much faster. So the same rock as it approaches Earth versus Venus will end up having much higher velocity closer to the Sun and even higher velocity closer to Mercury. And this higher velocity will lead to more energy produced when it hits the planet. And so as a result of this, twice as much mantle is going to end up being melted inside Venus, dramatically altering the geology and mineralogy of the entire planet. In effect, changing the physical structure and the interior as well as the surface of the planet. And so by having a lot more melting and a lot more very powerful disruptive events, Venus most likely ended up very different from planet Earth geologically. And in the last year or so, there have been quite a lot of announcements about the planned mission to Venus, including a really interesting mission involving flyers. Or I guess aerobots as they're known. And this is a pretty exciting mission because, once again, the scientists are going to try to figure out how to make things fly on a different planet. Now obviously NASA scientists have already had a lot of success on Mars with the helicopter, and remember the first official flying mission on another planet were essentially the Soviet balloon probes from I guess the late 80s, but now it looks like the scientists are trying to do something even more advanced, even better. And in this particular case it's going to be a very interesting um, airship hybrid that's going to have a balloon structure but also an airplane structure. It's going to use buoyancy to stay afloat, but it's also going to have aerodynamic lift in order to control its altitude. Now the actual shape and the structure is still being developed, but both the hardware and the software responsible for controlling these devices is already being actively developed with the grant from NASA. And currently it's believed that this will work a slightly different depending if it's day or night. So during the day it's going to function like an airplane, collecting the energy from the sun and then using some of the solar energy to drive its motors. But in order to conserve energy during nighttime, it might sort of act as a floating device and simply use its buoyancy to stay afloat. And that's of course to avoid the very high pressures and temperatures that could potentially destroy this craft if it kind of gets too low. And at the moment it's expected that this mission could potentially last anywhere from several months to maybe even several years. With many different teams becoming really excited to study the Venusian atmosphere because of all of these unusual properties and features that have been discovered in the last few years, sort of hinting on the potential existence of some kind of an unusual life there. We've talked about this in some of the previous videos that you can find either somewhere right there or in the description. And there are just so many mysteries about Venus that scientists would love to solve. Even the mystery of, for example, the length of its day. Even today the scientists don't really know how long the day is or why it's been seen to change over time. So for example, the average rotation between approximately 1991 and 2007 was slightly shorter than the average rotation discovered in 1991 and 1993. 
And so during the period of approximately 29 years, the single day on Venus changed in length by about 5 minutes. And although it might sound like a lot, it's kind of not, because a single day on Venus is already over 243 days long. And so in this case, something is definitely affecting the length of the day on Venus. And today it's believed that it's because of the heavy atmosphere. But it's still unknown how exactly all of this works. Although at least one study made a pretty good proposition that could be tested by these missions. It suggested that a lot of these changes in the Venusian day cycle seem to happen because of the gravitational pulls or the tidal pulls from both the Sun and planet Earth, both of which also seem to affect a lot of the activity in the atmosphere of the planet. And so depending on the position of the planet around the solar system, it's going to be receiving different amounts of pull from both the Sun and planet Earth, which will then affect its spin rate. And at the moment, it looks like it's actually speeding up, so basically it's increasing its rotation. But I guess one of the bigger mysteries when it comes to things spinning on Venus is the fact that it has something known as the super rotation. It relates to the atmosphere of Venus. Venus is obviously not the only object in the solar system that has what's known as super rotation, but the super rotation here is very extreme. Even though a single day on Venus is 243 days, when it comes to some parts of the atmosphere, it can actually spin around the planet in just 4 days, significantly faster than the planet itself. Which, as you can imagine, probably affects the planet in a lot of different ways. Ways we still don't really understand. But more importantly, one of the recent studies combined some of the observations from various tidal studies with the observations from the Akatsuki probe to reveal that they might have solved the mystery of super rotation that still has to be proven by some of these missions. And in this case, it looks like the super rotation might actually be maintained by various atmospheric tidal waves that are created by solar heating and the differences in temperature between the day side and the night side, which end up transferring very large amounts of heat in the equatorial region of the planet. But while this is happening, there's another heat transport happening in between the equatorial region and the polar region, transferring some of the heat from the equator to the poles. And so because of this unusual circulation in the atmosphere of Venus, it ends up having these extremely fast-moving winds in certain parts of the planet, but not other parts. And the heat transfer is very different from what you would expect on planets like Earth that do spin much faster. And this is a really good model for us because a lot of exoplanets discovered in the last few years have all been tidally locked to their star. And because of this, they might actually have extremely similar atmospheric effects to what we observe on Venus, which suggests that Venus could be a really good parallel to try to understand what happens on a lot of these different exoplanets out there. So quite a lot to learn, quite a lot to uncover, but more importantly, some of these future missions, including private missions, might be able to finally answer the question of what happened to Venus and how can we possibly prevent this from happening on Earth? Or can we? But I guess for now, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out all of the relevant links and all of the relevant studies in the description below. Subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.